Welcome to the Formula 2 Grand Prix of Finland in Poirunka. Finally, the first race of the year was about to start at the 1.7 km course, about 300 km north of Finland's capital Helsinki. And this racing Sunday already started pretty bad, because in warm-up on Sunday morning, Sweden's Oskar Samuelsson rolled over at the right-hander. As a consequence, Tobias Muntekas and new star pilot Konstantin Ustinov collided right behind, which took three boats out of the Finnish Grand Prix before the race was even started. A fourth boat followed in the parade lab with Uwe Slakteris retiring just before the start with technical problems. When the lights turned off, 17 boats entered the race. Eric Idin, who started from pole position, took the lead into turn one. But a heavy crash of Daniel Segenmark and Roman Vandyshev caused the first full course yellow of the day. Both pilots escaped their boats uninjured. But at least Segenmark's moor hall was totally destroyed. After almost 15 minutes, the green flag came out again and pole setter Eric Edin won the restart over Pierre Landin. When only seconds later, Sami Silio and Owen Jelf made contact at turn 4, which led to full calls yellow number 2. Jelf continued the race and also Silio tried to get back into the race. But the Grand Prix was over for the local hero and Silio had to retire from this race. After a couple of laps under yellow, the remaining boats formed it for the restart. When the green flag came out, Edin again pulled away and kept his leading position. But at the end of the first lap under green, Edin misjudged the turn and took out a buoy, which cost him the race and made Landin the new leader of this Grand Prix. In the shadows of the start crash, also Matthew Perfreyman and Stefan Hagen made major contact at the first turn, which forced Perfreyman to drop out of the race after some laps and end his ambitions to step on the podium. Hagen tried to continue the race and could take second position, but a short time later also the German went out of the Grand Prix, causing yellow number three. Meanwhile, rookie driver Alberto Comparato, who makes his F2 debut, found himself on second spot right behind race leader Pierre Landin, with Alex Carella on third and Johan Oesterberg fourth. When the race was restarted, Carella took his chance and used all his experience overtaking Comparato for second place. Comparato himself tried to fight back and got under pressure from Oesterberg. It looked like this could become a nice race for podium positions, when not even after one lap, yellow came out again, because Owen Jelf spun out at turn one. Jelf again could continue the race, and because there was no full lap of racing, Comparato got his second place back at this full course yellow. At the next restart, it was Carella again who could get the better acceleration over Comparato and took second, but then it got very close when Comparato tried to fight back in turn one. So now the race started to become a race, when Bimba Sjöholm moved up in the field with racing like this, catching Pavirik Nilsson. Pierre Landin, meanwhile, opened a little gap to second Alex Carella when the world champion had to lap Owen Jelf. At the back straight, he passed Jelf and somehow misjudged the following turn like Edin did before and took out the remaining buoy. This incident resulted in full course yellow number five, and the consequence for Landin would be a disqualification. But his team put in a protest at the race director immediately, so Landin continued the race under protest. No surprise that there was yet another restart, and this time Rube Tampa challenged Alberto Comparato for third and won. What followed was a threat. <laughs> fight for positions. 
who ever thought now this would become a straight race to the finish line, was wrong. Yellow number six came out when Owen Jelf and Frodi Sundstahl came together in turn three, resulting in Sundstahl turning over. Luckily, this race was held in Finland, so nobody would fear it could get dark before the checkered flag. Well, again and now for the final time the green flag was raised and Pierre Landin still kept his lead in front of Alex Carella and Rube Temper. In the final stages of this Grand Prix, Bimba Sjöholm and Johan Oesterberg had some nice racing for fifth position. And Oesterberg managed to stay in front of Sjöholm when finally the black and white flag came out with Landin crossing the line first, followed by Alex Corella and Rube Tempa. But this was of course not the end of the story. When Landin went on his winning lap, Corella watched the scenario thinking he was the actual winner because of Landin's buoy crash and a logically resulting disqualification. A very angry Corella went away and wasn't seen at the podium as well. Which wasn't meant to be for the history books either. I hate that uh, turn boy. Uh, so uh, I will see what uh, I have uh, failed to protest. There's, uh, uh, a new rule, as they say, and uh, we have to wait to see what uh, the verdict will come. After the prize giving, the race jury confirmed the disqualification of Pierre Landin. At the same time, the technical inspection of Corella's and even Rupp Tempus engine showed some irregularity, which resulted in a DQ of both drivers as well. So when Alberto Comparato and Bimba Sjöholm had a chat about Bimba's boat design back in the pits, they already knew who the winner of this season opener was. At his first ever Grand Prix in F2, Alberto Comparato was declared the winner, making him the youngest ever winning an F2 Grand Prix. You won. Yes, very good for the first race. We was fast, but I make some mistake, and then with some luck also I can win. We we have a new prop, so we can be faster. Bimba Sjöholm herself jumped on the podium, becoming third. Also, her best ever result in Formula Two, and second was Johan Österberg, who was very happy to finally making it on the podium again after a hard time in the previous season. I cannot even describe it because we have some uh, so lot of problems with. Uh, I crashed uh, during practice at home, and Mulga did a great job uh, rebuilding the boat for this race. And now I'm starting to get back with my head, uh, and then all the crashes and and all the yellow flag situations, and now ending up at the podium. It's the uh, the guys have done a great job. So with six yellow flags in one race and the youngest driver ever winning a Grand Prix, 2016 is already a record-breaking year. The next race will be the Grand Prix of Switzerland in Campione. Stay tuned and follow F2 on Facebook, YouTube and F2WorldChamp.com. Wow, 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 wow.